So hello, continuing where we left off in the last episode. So in the last episode, we learned about the endomembrane system. Now we are going to go into understanding each of the individual organelles that make up the endomembrane system. There are four organelles in the endomembrane system, right? That we learned about, which is the endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi complex, lysosomes, and vacuoles. First off, we are going to start off with the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, sorry. So the endoplasmic reticulum, let's break the word down, right? Let's break the word down. Endo means inside, plasmic implying cytoplasm and reticulum just means a network, right? So endoplasmic reticulum, so that is a network inside the cytoplasm of a eukaryotic cell. So that is what the name literally translates to. Okay, understanding. Electron microscopic studies of eukaryotic cells reveal the presence of a network or reticulum. So network and reticulum mean the same thing of tiny tubular structures so it is a reticulum or a network of tiny tubular structures scattered in the cytoplasm hence it's called the endoplasmic scattered in the cytoplasm that is called the endoplasmic reticulum right so a network of uh, a network or reticulum of tiny tubular structures scattered in the cytoplasm that is called the endoplasmic reticulum is what was revealed by the electron microscopic studies of the eukaryotic cell right so now 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 notice what happened here right notice what happened here initially Initially, when we were learning about the cell membrane, which was the outermost part of the or the covering of the of a eukaryotic cell, we learned that the electron microscope was not yet dis discovered, right? And after the discovery of electron microscope, we are now going into in learning the components of a eukaryotic cell as well, right? So that is a you know huge leap, right? Okay, so understanding uh, the end. Since the endoplasmic reticulum is like a network of tiny tubular, tubular means tube-like structures scattered in the cytoplasm, the hence endoplasmic reticulum divides the intracellular, intracellular space, meaning the space within the cell. That is why endoplasmic, reticul endoplasmic reticulum divides the intracellular space into two distinct compartments, i.e. that is luminal which is inside the endoplasmic reticulum and extra luminal, which is the cytoplasm compartments of the cells, right? So, see, I'll explain. I'll explain. See, if there, if, if this is the, if uh, this is a eukaryotic cell, right? If this is a eukaryotic cell, and then there is the, and then there is the nucleus of the eukaryotic cell, and then there are like a tiny tube-like, you know, tube-like, tube-like, tube, tubular. It's forming tubes. Okay, it's forming tube, tubes-like structures everywhere right in the cytoplasm so there will be a part of the cytoplasm which is covered by this tube like structure and that that part is called the interluminal right this is the luminal part of the uh, what do you say endoplasmic reticulum which is inside the endoplasmic reticulum and then the outside part the rest of the part of the cytoplasm which is not inside the tubular structure they are called the extra luminal parts right so very simple See, you can even understand using the uh, this diagram. So the entire thing, if it is you know surrounded by the cytoplasm, if the whole thing is inside the cytoplasm, so they these tubular structures, these tube-like structures, with they don't look exactly like tubes, but what their point is that it is a it's like a you know uh, almost like a closed space, right? So the closed space by the endoplasmic reticulum is essentially the luminal part, the, the inside. Luminal essentially means a cavity, right? Lumen, lumen essentially just means a cavity. So this is like a cavity which contains cytoplasm. So that part of the cytoplasm is called the luminal part. And the part that is not inside the tiny tubular structures are called the extra luminal part, which is just the cytoplasm, right? Okay, so the endoplasmic reticulum shows ribosomes attached to their outer surface, right? What are ribosomes? Ribosomes are essentially, uh, uh, they, are an, they are an organelle which is common in both uh, eukaryotes and prokaryotes. We have learned till now that it is an organelle that is a non-membrane bound organelle, right? It is a non-membrane bound organelle which is made up of two subunits, right? Which is usually made up of two subunits. So they are saying that the endoplasmic reticulum often, ri uh, often shows ribosomes attached to the outer surface, okay? So here you can see these small green dots, they are actually ribosomes okay so the endoplasmic reticulum bearing ribosomes the endoplasmic see endoplasmic reticulum often shows ribosomes attached to them not always so it is sometimes having ribosomes attached sometimes it does not have ribosomes attached to it and we are saying that when uh, the endoplasmic reticulum bearing ribosomes on their surface is called the rough endoplasmic reticulum right because this gives a rough you know rough look to the endoplasmic reticulum the Ribosomes give it a rough look and that is why it is called the rough endoplasmic reticulum 
and in absence of the ribosomes they appear smooth right like here you can see that this is also tubular part of the endoplasmic reticulum but they don't have any ribosomes attached on it and that is why they look kind of smooth right that is why it is called the smooth endoplasmic reticulum they individually have different functions because they individually have different functions like the endo even in endoplasmic reticulum there are different functions performed by uh, smooth endoplasmic reticulum and different performed by rough endoplasmic reticulum because rough has ribosomes attached on it and ribosome is a, is like specifically a pro site of protein synthesis right it uh, makes protein that is what the function of ribosomes is and since smooth does not have smooth er does not have ser does not have ribosomes it can't produce protein but it is still producing something which we are going to learn now but the endoplasm the rough er has ribosomes and that is why it is also producing proteins right okay uh, the rough endoplasmic reticulum rer is frequently observed in the cells activity involved uh, in the cells actively involved in protein synthesis so the rer is more frequently found in cells that have more protein synthesis and secretion right they are extensive and continuous with the outer membrane of the nucleus so one more thing it's uh, that the nucleus has actually two membranes which is the outer membrane and the inner membrane and uh, the outer membrane is continuous with the endoplasmic reticulum which is the rough endoplasmic reticulum not the smooth one but the rough endoplasmic reticulum right because they are very they are very specific with it that they means uh, rer is actually extensive and continuous with the outer membrane of the nucleus which has a specific function the rer has a specific function which is the protein synthesis and secretion now why only is the rough endoplasmic reticulum continuous with the uh, you know nucleus well that is a very uh, good you know what is your concept it's a very good thing you can understand if it if you can understand but i'll definitely bring this up uh, later on as well see how does how is protein protein produced in a cell how is protein produced in a cell actually what is happening is that there is something called you know uh, what happens central dogma of uh, molecular biology which is uh, it's like dna dna see if, all information is actually present in the cell as dna right so the dna self replicates self replicates and the dna will then form and the dna since it has to self replicate why because one protein is needed many times so if the cell does not replicate and just makes one protein one time then that piece of information will be turned into a protein so how do how does the cell keep on making the same protein if it does not have the initial in, in, initial information about it so that is why the dna must replicate first the dna replicates then forms uh, you know mrna which is you know you can say it, uh, it's like a, a simplified version of the uh, you know the dna right it forms an rna which is a simplified form of the dna and then uh, this process of conversion from dna to rna is called transcription we are going to go in depth into learning this in the class 12th chapter of uh, you know molecular biology which is uh, genetics 2 which was molecular biology it had some name like uh, the chapter that comes right after principles of inheritance it had some molecular biology name right so uh, rna and uh, rna then forms protein right this rna then forms protein so the dna is being used to produce protein because the cell itself only knows what protein it needs from the dna right so this process is called translation so and this translation this translation actually is done by ribosomes so notice how the dna is needed to produce proteins right the dna is needed to produce protein and ribosomes are the one that produce protein so the you can just understand basically dna is used by ribosomes to produce protein dna used by ribosomes to produce protein so now where is this dna present in the form of genes right they are, it's essentially dna and genes are the same things right genes and dna genes and gene are is like a segment of dna and uh, dna is essentially you can say the whole whole sequence of information and dna is stored in the nucleus of the in nucleus of the uh, what do you say eukaryotic cell or uh, nucleo <laughs> nucleosphere or nucleoid of uh, in prokaryotic cells so what is in this case what is happening the you you notice you notice how beautiful it is the dna is is actually present in the nucleus of the cell and since dna since ribosomes are needed to produce protein from dna and the rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes on it 
they are continuous with the outer membrane so that dna can easily directly go into the tough endoplasmic reticulum where the ribosomes are present and protein can be formed directly so the, it is like a cycle it is like a chain that is why that is exactly this is the reason why the rough endoplasmic reticulum is actually only the rough endoplasmic reticulum is continuous with the outer membrane of the nucleus and not the smooth endoplasmic reticulum because the smooth endoplasmic reticulum does not have ribosomes so what is the function of it being continuous with the secondary uh, you know layer of nucleus so I, if you didn't understand uh, this don't worry about it i'll explain it once more when we after when after we learn about the nucleus there we are going to learn about the dna and how it is present in the eukaryotic cell so you will be able to better understand what i'm trying to explain okay so don't worry about it but i hope you understood i explained it as much as i could okay so the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is the major site for synthesis of lipid so lipid we already know what lipids are lipids are essentially hydrocarbon chains they are hydrocarbon chains they are non polar in nature so the smooth endoplasmic reticulum are, is a major site for synthesis of lipid okay so in animal cells lipid like steroidal hormones are synthesized in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum so these are the functions of the rough and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum with that we have finished understanding the endoplasmic reticulum which is the first organelle or you can say which is just an organelle of uh, which is a part of the endomembrane system and now we are going to learn about the Golgi apparatus in the next video. I hope you understood. Okay.